In this lecture, we're going to discuss three applications of the reverse heat engine. So these applications are heat pumps, air conditioners, and refrigerators. And these devices utilize the principle known as the reverse heat engine. Now before we define what the reverse heat engine is, let's recall what a heat engine is. A heat engine essentially transports energy from a higher temperature to a lower temperature and while that takes place some of that thermal energy is transformed into mechanical energy into work so as QH is pumped into our heat engine some of that QH is transformed into work and the rest of that QH is dumped back into the surroundings and the equation the relationship is given by the following formula so inside a heat engine we have QH of heat that is transported into our engine. Now, some of that QH is transported or transformed into work, and the rest of that is discharged back into the surroundings. So, a heat engine transforms some of the QH, some of the heat into mechanical work, while the rest of it, QL, is discharged into the surroundings. Now, the reverse heat engine is essentially the opposite. It operates on the opposite principle. So instead of transferring energy from a higher temperature to a lower temperature in a reverse heat engine, our entire goal is to transport energy from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. And the way that we accomplish that is by doing mechanical work. So we input work and as a result, we take a chunk of that energy given by QL and we transport that energy into the surroundings, which is at a higher temperature. So a reverse heat engine pumps heat given by QL out of our system by doing work on that system. The sum of the work plus the QL is then discharged into the surroundings and that relationship is given by the following equation. The work plus our QL, the amount of heat that is taken out of our system at a lower temperature is equal to the QH. So all of this is discharged into the surroundings that is at a higher temperature. Now, what device performs the work? Well, usually work is done by some type of electric engine, some type of electric motor. So let's look at the following three applications of our reverse heat engine. And let's begin with the refrigerator. So refrigerators essentially use a motor to pump warm air inside the fridge to the outside of the fridge. For example, the room. Now inside the fridge, we are at a lower temperature and the outside of the fridge, the room is at a higher temperature. So an electric motor does work to pump some of that heat inside our object, which is at a lower temperature to the outside, which is at a higher temperature. And we define something called the coefficient of performance to be the ratio of the amount of heat that is pumped out of our fridge divided by the work that is done by the motor to pump that heat. So this ratio is basically, or it basically tells us how much heat the fridge can pump per some given unit of work. Now recall from this equation, work plus QL is equal to QH. So we can rearrange this equation and we get work is equal to QH minus QL. So if we replace the work with this, we get the following equation. So the coefficient of performance for a non-ideal system is equal to QL divided by QH minus QL, where QH is simply how much, how much heat is pumped out of our system, and QH is the total amount of heat that is pumped outside into our surroundings. Now, if we're dealing with an ideal system, we have the following equation. So we simply replace the QL with the temperature low and QH with the temperature high, where the temperature H is simply the temperature that is higher and the TL is the T low, the temperature that is lower. So this equation only works 
for an ideal system. So now let's move on to the air conditioner. The air conditioner pumps warm air at a lower temperature by doing work and discharging the heat into the surroundings which is at a higher temperature. So let's suppose we have the following room, our system, and this is our air conditioner. So the air conditioner essentially does work on our system on the room and it takes some of that heat from our system which is at a lower temperature and it takes that heat and it pumps it outside which is at a higher temperature. So we have QL plus work is the amount of energy that is released into the surroundings that is released into the place where the temperature is higher. And finally, let's look at the heat pump. The heat pump is essentially a device that is used to warm a house in the winter. It uses a motor to pump the heat given by QL from the outside, which is at a lower temperature, into the house, which is at a higher temperature. So the entire premise of a heat pump is to bring heat into the house to warm the house. So if this is our house and this is our heat pump, the heat pump does work on the air on the outside, bring some of that energy inside and so the house becomes warmer. And in the same exact way, we can also define the coefficient of performance for a heat pump to be the amount of energy that is brought into the house per given work done by that heat pump. So how much heat can be delivered per some unit of work. So notice the entire premise of the refrigerator is to cool the inside of the fridge, while the entire premise of the heat pump is to warm the inside of the house. That's exactly why we have QL divided by work for this case and QH divided by work for this case.